identify and calculate angle measures from trig ratios. We're at 8.3a, so we have six previous videos for Chapter 8 that are linked in the description in the geometry playlist if you haven't seen them. And the steepness of a road is often expressed as a percent grade. And if a road has a 31.5 percent grade, like Filbert Street in San Francisco, it means the road rises 31.5 feet over a horizontal distance of 100 feet, which is equivalent to 17.5 degree angle. And we can use trig ratios to change a percent grade to an angle measure. And the grade of a road affects the truck's stopping distance and can be found by using a trig ratio, a trigonometric ratio. So take a look at these pictures I have here. You'll see caution signs along the road. They're yellow like this, and they're either pennant-shaped or diamond-shaped like this. And this one's saying the road has a 25% grade and lets the truck drivers know. And you'll sometimes see along a highway a little gravel or dirt road that when you're coming down a hill, this little gravel dirt road goes uphill for a short distance. That's a runaway truck ramp. So if the truck loses control and he's going down this road that's got a very steep grade, he can go up that runaway truck ramp and going upwards will help him stop. See? We can identify angles from trigonometric ratios. We can use the trig ratio, the cosine of A equals 0.6 or 6 tenths, to determine which angle of the triangle is angle A. So looking at the diagram, we see the hypotenuse is 6 centimeters, this leg is 3.6, and this leg is 4.8. And it's telling us that this is angle 1 and that's angle 2, but we don't see ABC or XYZ telling us which angle is which. So to find angle A, we know the cosine would be the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of A, we would use an adjacent leg. So if it was for angle 1, we would put this adjacent leg to angle 1, 3.6, over the 6 centimeter hypotenuse. When we divide, we find out it is 0.6. And if we tried doing it with the cosine of angle 2, the adjacent leg is 4.8, putting that over the hypotenuse is a 6, we would get a 0.8. So we know that the cosine of A is equal to the cosine of angle 1, so angle 1 is A. We know this would be the A. Okay? And in the previous videos, we've learned that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 0.5. And conversely, if we know that the sine of an acute angle is 0.5, we conclude that the angle measures 30 degrees. And this is written as the inverse sine of 0.5 is equal to 30 degrees. So we use trig ratios to find side lengths in a right triangle. We've done that in the previous videos. We use an inverse trig function to find an angle measure when the ratio of the side lengths is known in a right triangle. So the trig ratios are side lengths, the inverse trig functions are angle measures, okay? If we know the sine, cosine, or tangent of an acute angle measure, we can use the inverse trig functions to find the measure of an angle. A little yellow hand means you should probably write this in your notes. So here's some inverse trigonometric functions. If the sine of A is equal to X, well, then the inverse of x is equal to the measure of angle A. And if the cosine of A is equal to x, then the inverse cosine of x is equal to the measure of angle A. And if the tangent of A is equal to x, then the inverse tangent of A is equal to the measure of angle A. So if you're confused, stick with me. The expression, this sin with the little negative 1x, is read as the inverse of sine x. And it doesn't mean 1 over sine of x. I know in algebra we learned if we had a negative exponent for a, a number, we could write it as a fraction. This is not the same thing, okay? It doesn't mean that. We can think of the inverse sine of x as the angle whose sine is x, okay? So the inverse sine of x is the angle whose sine equals x. And the inverse cosine of x 
is the angle whose cosine equals x. And the inverse tangent of x is the angle whose tangent equals x. All right? Now, we can use a scientific calculator to find an angle measure to the nearest degree. And depending on the calculator, because they're all so different, you may need to press the arc key, the inverse key, or the second key to find an inverse trig function. Now, most cell phone calculators cannot do inverse trig functions. I know you can't do it on an Android phone. But there's an app you can get called the Real Calc Scientific Calculator, and it's popular and it's very decent. So if you have this Real Calc app on your phone and you're using that as a scientific calculator, if you want to find the inverse cosine of 0.5, all you do is you push 0.5 then you hit the shift button and the cosine key because that'll give you the inverse by pushing the shift, okay? And it'll tell you it's 60 degrees. If you want to find the inverse sine of 0.45, you hit 0.45, the shift key again, and then the sine key. And it'll give you this nice long decimal that we can round to 27 degrees. If you want to find the inverse tangent of 3.2, you hit 3.2, shift, and then the tangent button, you get this long decimal that we can round to 73 degrees. Make sure the calculator is in degree mode. Now, some calculators will display the sign and then a, a parenthesis, one parenthesis, and when the sign key is pressed. So if you're calculating the sine of A times the value of X, close the parentheses before entering the multiplication symbol. Okay, so you want to put the close parentheses, and this applies to cosine or tangent as well. Okay, just depends on your calculator. All right, our next lesson is solving right triangles. That's going to be 8.3b before we move on to angle of elevation and depression in 8.4. All right, so now you know about the percent grade of a road, and I hope you took good notes because this will be helpful for you. All right? So I'll see you next time, and have a great day. Bye.